Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel where today we have my picks for the top 10 rookie wide receivers coming out of this year's draft for your dynasty leagues. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick those top 10 receivers that I feel are going to be the most productive this season um, and in dynasty going forward. So it's going to be kind of a mix of both how I feel about one, how they're going to do now and two, how they're going to do in the future. I know it's been a long time coming since I posted a video. It's been about like two months, I want to say, but I'm back. Uh, I'm looking forward to making more videos like this for you guys. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now coming in at number 10, we have Xavier Leggett from the Carolina Panthers. Probably butchered that name, but he has very good physical traits. He's got the size and athleticism uh, to make a really strong outside wide receiver. As you can see there, he's 6'3", 227. He has very strong hands. Um, however, he's on in a very abysmal, you know, pass offense, and it's probably going to be difficult to establish himself uh, while he's dealing with, you know, being behind Thielen and now Deontay Johnson going over there. Um, his wide receiver comparison is a DK Metcalf type of player. Uh, he's he's big. He's he's really got that same you know physical trait that DK has been very known of having, especially uh, his physique. Um, so that being said, uh, my predictions, his floor is probably going to be about wide receiver 13. After the top like 12 or 13 guys, everything kind of falls off a bit. I don't see him going very, uh, very far low below that point. His ceiling is a wide receiver 6. He could establish himself very early and get more reps than Deontay Johnson, who's been known to have a pass dropping problem and Thielen who's you know getting older that they need to replace um, so I could see him kind of stepping up into maybe a wide receiver one slash wide receiver two role on that team and getting the yardage to go with it uh, but not anywhere further than wide receiver six all right now coming in at number nine I have Adonai Mitchell now number 10 and number nine for me were really close they were kind of interchangeable but I feel like Adonai Mitchell has a little more potential um, in this Colts offense than uh, Xavier does with the Panthers. Uh, he's a functional route runner on his uh, vertical route tree. He is very good with his go routes, his posts, his digs. Uh, he's got very good hand-eye coordination and a wide catch radius, and he's really good at creating separation. Um, he's one of those guys that you know you can just throw it up to him and he's going to make that play. Um, he does, however, struggle with his change of direction, and that creates an inconsistent yard after catch. Uh, he's a pretty bad blocker. He's very not very known for his blocking, and he struggles versus press coverage, which you know uh, could be an issue in translation to the NFL. Um, his pro comp, I would say, it's probably Gabe Davis, but he's a little faster. Um, but it, it's pretty much Gabe uh, Davis. As for his predictions, um, similar. To Xavier, um, his ceiling is wide receiver 6, the same way. Uh, I have his floor, however, at wide receiver 12. I don't think he'll fall below that point, and that's just what gets him the edge over Xavier. All right, next, coming in at number 8, we have Ricky Pearsall from my San Francisco 49ers. Um, I'm going to be honest, I questioned the pick at the time uh, when we made it. I felt like we really should have chosen a corner um, and, you know, establish that secondary, but I'm not going to hate on it too much. Uh, Ricky Pearsall has a lot of great traits. He's good sized. Uh, he has a lot of experience working on the outside and in the slot. He's got that natural quickness to his movement that makes him potentially a really good slot receiver. Uh, his short area quickness kind of adds to that and it allows him to beat press really easily and get into his routes. Um, and he knows how to attack those coverages. He's really good at attacking. Uh, he, however, is not very explosive when it comes to moving. Um, and he has more of a build-up speed than a quickness. So he needs to kind of, you know, establish himself and then he'll get going. Um, his pro comp, a lot of people have compared him to Kenny Stills. I agree. He's got uh, that build-up quickness with that deep threat ability. Uh, I think in this offense, especially with, you know, the injuries that Debo's had in the past, he could fit in really well here, uh, especially if we look to trade Debo 
and I think that for that reason, um, he's probably got a wide receiver six ceiling the same way and a wide receiver 11 floor. Um, so just a little bit higher than the other two we've mentioned. All right, up next we have Brian Thomas. Um, I know a lot of people are high on Brian Thomas. I am not one uh, that is particularly very high on Brian Thomas. Um, He does have a great ability to win at the line of scrimmage, and he has these flashes of quick, snappy route running um, that allow him to make, you know, uh, get into open space and make those nice catches. Um, But he's not great on contested catches, and he doesn't fight through contact very well. Um, I think that fighting through contact is a big thing when it comes to being a wide receiver in the NFL. And if you can't, you know, constantly fight through that contact and make those uh, catches, uh, I don't see you being, you know, very good in the NFL. Um, For that reason, I still have his floor at wide receiver 11, um, but his ceiling is only wide receiver 5. He's also, you know going and fighting for targets with Ingram and Christian Kirk. I know he's supposed to take over that Calvin Ridley type role, but um, I think he's a little more limited than the other six on this list. All right, up next we have number six, Keon Coleman for the Buffalo Bills. Um, Now, the reason I have him above Brian Thomas has a lot to do with uh, his physical traits. I think that his physical traits are better. Um, than Brian Thomas's personally. Um, and I feel like the situation that he's in with the Bills is a lot better uh, considering who his quarterback is. Um, Coleman's really explosive and he's got great ball skills, elite level, actually. Um, and he has the ideal build for the position. Um, he, he's got a great physique uh, for the wide receiver position to make those contested catches and uh, uh, really be that wide receiver one for the Bills. Um, Now, on the flip side, he does only have average deep speed, and his footwork could be a little better. He kind of takes a lot of steps to gather himself at some points when he's working on his routes, um, and that could definitely be a negative for him. Uh, My pro comp for him would probably be an Allen Robinson type. Um, You know, that ability to uh, track the ball, get up there, and make that catch. Um, That being said, I have his floor at wide receiver eight i don't see him going you know very far below that and i have his ceiling at wide receiver three especially because the position that he's in um with the bills for the next couple of years i really think he could be that outstanding receiver if it all comes down to it all right up next we have lad mcconkey um now mcconkey an interesting one he was pretty close with switching with uh keon coleman as well Um, but I think I like the situation right now that Justin Herbert has where this is just going to automatically kind of go into his number one potentially, uh, whereas there's kind of a question mark with Keon Coleman. Um, That being said, he has above average hands in traffic. He's a good route runner. He has quick feet with good speed. Um, However, he is pretty skinny. Uh, He struggles to fight through the contact at the line and in his routes because of his skinny frame. Um, and he has a poor jump ball ability. My pro comp for him would be probably Elijah Moore. They have kind of a similar build. They're about the same size, um, but I think that that is a good comparison for him. Uh, my predictions are just about the same. Wide receiver 7 as a 4. Uh, his ceiling is wide receiver 3, again, because Herbert is lacking in that real you know, uh, wide receiver room right now. I think he could potentially be a really, really outstanding play for Uh, this year and the years to come up next at number four we have xavier worthy um this one is you know he has the potential to really be great in that kansas city offense he's got amazing speed we all know it he's got good route running and uh good route running tools uh to be really good he's got great explosiveness as again we've all seen that for uh two one forty yard dash um this mixed with you know rice's off-field issues They could mean nothing right now. They could mean something eventually. I think this year he has the potential to be great. And I think, honestly, he has the potential to really be that uh, that Tyreek Hill type uh, void fill as far as, you know, Mahomes just likes to throw deep, you know, throw it down, uh, leave it up there for Xavier Worthy. I think that could be very well uh, within the realm of possibilities. Um, He's got a skinny frame and he can't fight through contact because of that once again. 
Um, and he has a tendency to jog through the routes when he isn't getting the ball and you just kind of know he's not getting the ball. It's pretty obvious. He makes it pretty well known. Um, I don't think there's anything better of a comparison pro-wise for him than Jamison Williams, who's kind of a similar type player, uh, that really big deep threat. Um, I predict that he'll have a floor of wide receiver six and a ceiling of wide receiver three. Uh, I think Mahomes still has plenty of targets to get the ball to, um, but I think he could really have a breakout season. At number three, we have probably my most questionable take of this video. I have Malik Neighbors. Um, now, I know a lot of people have Malik Neighbors as minimum number two. He's either one or two. There's no others. Um, he is very good at his yards after catch, very easily the best yard after catch runner um, in the class. He's elite at all levels as a wide receiver. He's got good ball tracking and a very good burst. Um, he truly is a deep threat. Um, my issues are he struggles to fight for uh, the ball in the air. He doesn't really, you know, make those contested catches. And the biggest concern that I have, and I understand this is just temporary and it could potentially be better in the future, but the New York Giants pass offense is horrid. They are awful. They have so many question marks. We don't even know, you know, uh, if Daniel Jones is going to be the quarterback for the future. And I think it's just created problems for the Giants. I can't put him at two, um, not knowing the future at quarterback. And that's really what's keeping me here uh, with him. His pro comp is Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, they have, you know, very similar physical traits. Um, and I think that he's a very elite, uh, skilled wide receiver. Uh, my predictions, he's wide receiver three is his floor, uh, is my best guess. Um, maybe wide receiver four, but his ceiling is definitely wide receiver one because he could cement himself very early on as the number one wide receiver in New York. And obviously if I have neighbors at three, then I have to have Odunes at two, um, I just like Odunes and the situation uh, a lot better than Neighbors, to be honest with you. Um, he makes great adjustments while reading coverage. He's really good at finding his space in zone coverage. He's a very good route runner. He has great ball skills. Um, my issues are, you know, he kind of has average explosiveness. Um, he's not very fast, and he has inconsistencies at winning versus press coverage. Um but his pro comp is Devontae Adams. He is that type of receiver. I truly and firmly believe it. I think he's in a better situation again um, than Neighbors is. I think he has the potential to be a better receiver than Neighbors, honestly. Um, so he does have the same floor at wide receiver three that Neighbors does and the same ceiling at wide receiver one. I just honestly, this is personal preference, and I like uh, Odunes more than Neighbors. And, of course, obviously, at number one, we have Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, this guy is super explosive. He has this rare ability to track the ball and adjust to throws that you just... There aren't many people like him. Um, he is dominant on the outside. He does have only, you know, average yards after catch, but he is looking to be the best wide receiver prospect since Jamar Chase. He's, you know, number top five. Over the last 10 years, wide receiver prospect at worst. He's 6'3", 205. He has 144 catches with 2,500 yards and 28 touchdowns over the last two years at Ohio State. Um, he won the Boletnikov. Uh, he's immediately going to be a top wide receiver in that Arizona group, and that's why I have him at ceiling number one with a floor of number two. The only way that I see him not being number one at all is if Kyler gets hurt. Um, but he, you know, realistically, we're kind of looking at a wide receiver, one ceiling, wide receiver, one floor, uh, in my opinion. And I would say that Julio Jones is a very strong comparison to him. And there you guys have it. Uh, my first video back in a very long time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did make sure you smash that like button, subscribe. If you're new here, um, tell me, you know, in the comments, tell me what takes you think that I'm horribly wrong at. Tell me what takes you think that I'm you know, a genius at, um, let me know your feelings, uh, and, you know, be on the lookout for my next videos. I'm also going to go over, um, the running backs and quarterbacks, but for now, um, make sure you guys, you know, 
uh, come back to my channel again. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.